Hi, this is Randy. This is part two. I'm going to continue reading the article or paper uh, that I um, have been discussing with some commentary. I'm just going to jump in. Levant goes on to explain that this goes on to promote a non-relational sexuality in men in which they have easy access and can achieve sexual satisfaction without concern for the woman or natural attachments that would be made in real intercourse. So I'm continuing reading the article um, just prior. It was discussing the kinds of pornography that are typically seen. Uh, rape scenes and domination that has nothing to do with love or emotional attachment. There are three primary elements to this non-relational sexuality. Firstly, there is the matter of objectification in which the woman is no longer a person but a mere sexual plaything. Secondly, in fixation, the male focuses his attention of a of a specific part of the female anatomy and not on the woman herself. Lastly, the notion of conquest and the importance for the man to win her. Certain sexual expectations are made and often unfulfilled. Sex is transformed into a commodity and creates what Levant calls centerfold syndrome. This occurs when the view that the man have of women becomes distorted, distorted and they view females solely as objects for sex. And heaven, isn't this what we see today? It creates an addiction to the female body and contains several other negative elements as if they already, you know, as if they needed any prodding along to become addicted to the sexual, I mean, to the female body, even without porn, right? I mean, the first is the idea of voyeurism, in which the man can look at, wom at women whenever he pleases, seemingly without repercussions. So watching porn from that voyeuristic view promotes cat calling and this feeling like you know you're allowed to look stare and um, allow your fantasies to run wild because that's what you do when you're watching porn and you're so conditioned to doing it the visual becomes a central theme to sexual interaction the second problem is the objectification as previously mentioned Levant quotes, she is not human, for the pornographic camera performs a miracle in reverse. Looking on a living being, a person with a soul, it produces an image of a thing. The next problem is using women for masculinity validation. The need for this validation is crucial and is never truly established since any failure could call for re-evaluation of this identity. So when the man watches porn, he doesn't have to he doesn't have to prove anything. He doesn't have to establish anything. He doesn't have to put into any any effort um, to get this so-called reward. Uh, thus the man has learned the graphic responses that they must achieve from women to feel validated that their sexual about their sexual prowess so this is how they learn that the way that they get validated is through acting like how the porn stars act and I don't know I'm not quite sure that that's how a man is going to get his identity validated I'm quite sure that his entire identity does not rest upon the way that he has sex and that that is not the main feature or the only feature 
that a woman would look upon in order to validate or choose a partner. If they are, they're going to be in some severe trouble. Yet another issue that arises is trophyism, where men began to begin to flaunt their sexual conquests and reduce an entire person to a number. Here, they meet a conflict in which society condemns womanizers, yet holds hold characters like James Bond in high self-esteem, thus confusing men in producing contradictory examples for proper interaction. Lastly is the fear of true intimacy that arises in men. Early childhood traumas can learn can learn a sort of ambivalence toward women uh, toward women's bodies as they epitomize all things that boys are conditioned against such as intimacy, softness, sexuality, and comfort. These effects all impact women so strongly that naturally relationships feel the impact of these materials as well. Zitzman states that by divorcing the sexual response and experience from the natural constraints of attachment relationship, pornography elicits and enables the development of addictive dynamics. The reinforced view of sex without, atta without attachments builds a narcissistic view and habit of release without attentiveness or responsiveness. So it's like you get the reward, but you don't have to do anything for it. You learn and you're conditioned by doing this. Therefore, your expectation is, is that you will get continue to get the live reward and not have to do anything. And this is exactly what I see with um, men online today who are uh, looking for a partner. They are very focused on sex. Okay, they don't need to tell me that. I already know. They can keep their mouths shut. But what happens is the second component is there. They don't want to put any effort. They want it as easily as it is to click a button. And therefore it really has nothing to do with developing any kind of attachment therefore <laughs> I don't want it why would I um, this habit is then fueled by material easily accessible via, via the internet the secrecy that surrounds these habits can cause great preoccupation in a marriage doubt about fidelity begins and mistrust takes place out of the women who are in therapy with their significant others for sexual addictions only 14 percent fully trust their partner I don't even know why those 14 percent would fully trust their partner if you're in therapy with your partner for sex addiction and oh, why would any of them be trusting their partner at that point Trust has been found to be the most strongly impacted factor of pornography viewing. So for these men that say, I don't have any ill effects as the result of my porn watching and my porn addiction, well, what the result that they have is that they will not be trusted. And my guess is that the woman doesn't even necessarily have to know that they're watching it in order to develop that intuitive lack of trust in the man. So now if the man doesn't want any woman ever trusting and believing them, then I guess porn addiction is fine. But I think in order to develop a good relationship, you want to be able to trust the other person and you would love for them to also trust you. But men, no one's going to trust you while you're preoccupied with pornography. And it doesn't matter if you're the nicest, supposedly nicest guy on earth. Because to me, nice guys don't objectify women and they don't support an industry that 
consists of a bunch of damaged women and a dark underground mafia-like system that uh, benefits and profits from the um, control, coercion, and uh, degradation of women and their souls. Women also tend to feel overall a sense of disconnection and distance, a breakdown in assumptions and expectation, as well as the general feeling of being emotionally and psychologically unsafe. So the way we feel emotionally and psychologically unsafe when we're with a narcissist and we just can't put our finger in it, on it, on the reason why, for me personally, some of that, I think, stems from what I found later to be my ex-somatic covert malignant narcissist, antisocial, blah, 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 on and on, whatever he has, um, that that made me feel very emotionally and psychologically unsafe because I did find out that he was viewing porn, and it wasn't only that, but it ended up going to online um, trolling for women that were willing to have casual encounters uh, for free, um, some kind of dirty, nasty meetings, uh, and this is of some person that holds himself in very high esteem as this very, you know, upright citizen that uh, would never do such a thing, you know, this is what he portrayed to me and to, of course, the outside world. His, in fact, he would be disgusted with anybody who would do so. But that's the, the hypocrite part of the narcissist. Uh, this may result in the loss of secure attachments and develop into an unhealthy form of interaction. So you could form an attachment and then um, lose the attachment with your partner as a result of becoming addicted to pornography. The lack of security often causes women to retreat physically and mutual sexual gratification decreases for both parties. So therefore, what happens is, is that you're watching all this porn, maybe behind your wife's back, you're getting all these things are happening in your brain and uh, you're denying that you have any problem and you're just thinking that you're being gratified because you know and you're probably rationalizing all over the place that this is something that's good for you and your marriage and something that your body needs and all this other bullshit so then as you do that the wife or long-term partner can't, begins feeling very insecure and losing trust. Therefore, she starts questioning you, maybe becoming clingy, and feeling very insecure with the physical connection, and then her sexual gratification, she retreats. She retreats from physical closeness, and mutual sexual gratification decreases for both parties. Why? Because the woman is now afraid, she's insecure, she feels unsafe, and she is not feeling relaxed, and she doesn't want to have sex. Well, that is going to contribute to your mutual sexual dissatisfaction. I mean, if you're not having it, and if she doesn't want to because she doesn't trust you, you're not going to feel probably that good about it either. And the cycle continues. And then after it's all said and done and you get you know the narcissist complaining about this lack of sex and lack of gratification and blaming you for all the things you're not doing because you feel insecure because they caused it and triggered it for you um, then they blame you and they go off and uh, have affairs and continue to meet new people so you're right in your feeling unsafe psychologically and emotionally I mean but what caused it the chicken or the egg I mean did you just start feeling insecure for no reason no 
you had a great reason. Stay tuned for the next video.